guys. This is uh, Danny from Deep South Homestead. We've had lots of questions about the pond since the rains and stuff like that. Well, the pond has come up 13 inches. Uh, I have a gauge here that I've put in the water. I've had to move it twice because it was way out there. And every time it would get up to five inches, I would move it. And I've moved it twice. Uh, it got up to five inches, which meant I had 10 inches of water come in. I moved it again. This last rain, I'm up to three inches. So I'm up to 13 inches of water in the pond. I put lime around the pond last week. I put like 600 pounds in the water on the banks around the pond and all, and the rain has washed it down into the pond and stuff like that. Uh, I tested the pond at that point and the pH was 5.5. And we know that in order to have a successful fish harvest and, and be able to raise fish successfully, you need a seven point or better. So, I've got my pH testing stuff here. Now, this is what I use to test my pH in my body. I try to stay about a 7 with my body. Uh, and it probably is not the exact thing I need for testing the pond, but it gets it pretty close. Uh, what I do is I tear these test strips off like this. And it's a lot like doing it in the body. You just stick it in the water. And we have a, uh, some markings on the side here that we can go by right here. So I just... I stick it in the water right quick and I just pull it out and I start shaking it. You do an instant reading. So what I'm finding out right now, let's see here. We are, we're darker than that. We're about, looks like, the best I can tell, looks like I'm getting closer to a six now. I'm between a 5.8 and a 6. It's very difficult to uh, to tell how much difference they are because they're really, really close right there. So, so I've, I've come up from 5.5 to almost 6 with 600 pounds of lime. Uh, the recommendation for my area is one ton of lime per acre. I haven't had a soil test done on this or anything, but that's just the recommendation for my area. And we're up to 600 pounds, so I do have almost a ton of lime here. And what I, I didn't want to overdo it, but according to the Game and Fish Commission, I cannot overdo it. No matter how much I put in it, it's not going to hurt anything, even if it's above 7. But I wanted to have it as close to 7 as I could get it here at Deep South. Uh, because we're wanting to get fish started in this as quickly as possible because right now well we're going to go get a rod and reel and i'm going to put a sinker on it with a cork and we're going to test the depths of the pond in different places because actually i don't know how deep it is i'm guessing it's probably three foot in some places maybe four foot uh but i don't know and i would like to know ahead of time just how deep and where the deepest points of the pond are. So that's probably going to be our next phase. As you can tell now, it's done made it up past the pier on one side. A frog was right there just then when you looked at him. Uh, it's made it up past the pier legs here now. So it's uh, when I built the pier, it was like three feet out from the pier. And I had plenty of room to walk around the end of the pier to put the lights on and to build the pier and stuff. So now it's up to the pier and coming in a little bit more. So guys, I think that'll be our next thing is to test the depth of the water. We know that the pH has got to come on up, and I'm not going to put fish in it until I get it to a 7. Once I get it to a 7, I will, I will go and talk to the fish hatchery about putting fish in it at that point. Because it doesn't, it doesn't technically have to be completely full to put fish in it, but I know this one is trying to... I'm trying to get the frogs. She's trying to get the frogs here because there's frogs in the pond everywhere. And they keep coming out on the bank and hopping back in the water. Because it's plenty deep for bluegill. And plenty plenty of water here for bluegill. The only problem is there's no vegetation from the feed on yet. So we would probably have to put feed for the bluegill until it actually begins to settle some. And we we'll probably put some flathead minnows in here or something for them to be able to feed on. There he is. Hope he popped back up and went down.
Okay guys, we've got a split shot here and we've got a slip cork on it. So what I'm doing is I'm taking this tape measure and I'm running it down putting a split shot at two foot deep. So I want to check it and see uh, you know, where we're two foot at. This reel has never been thrown. This is brand new. It belongs to me, right? Yep. Throws good. Oh, we got too much weight on it for that cork. What does that mean? That means uh, I got to change split shots. <laughs> that split shot's too heavy for that cork. It just takes it right under. Oh, it takes the cork under. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, I got to go get a smaller split shot. Okay guys, we got rained out here. We had to run inside. It come a storm for about 15 minutes here. And when it did, our water came up a half an inch in the pond. It rained that hard that it came up half an inch in this pond. Look at that, it's up to four and a, uh, three and a half inches now, almost up to the four mark. So that was good. So what we're gonna do here, we have the cork. We have some little split shots here. We have it set at two foot. We're going to uh, check the depths of the water in the pond. We're going to start at two foot, and I'll show you the differences here, uh, how you can tell. Let me see if I can get this thing out there. Okay, see how the cork lays down? Like that? That tells me that the water is shallower than two foot right there. The cork is standing up out yonder, which means that it's deeper than two foot there. So let me bring it in some. It's standing up there, which means it's deeper than two foot there. It's deeper than two foot right here. Let's come on in. Okay, it's laying down. So it's not deeper than two foot right there. But it is two foot deep right there. Okay. So we're going to check up the pond now. If I can see how far up there I can get it. There we go. Okay. Definitely deeper than two foot out there. Yep. Standing up there. Yep, standing up there. Oh, guys, I want to tell you, that sun is hot. Okay. What we're fixing to do, we're fixing to move this thing down another foot. We're going to check it right quick. We got the old trusty tape manager out here. At 36 inches. Hold that for me, Ms. Wanda. Okay, there's three foot. Let's check three feet. Okay. The cork is laying down right yonder. So it's not three foot it's not there. Not three foot right there. Yep. Three foot there, it stood up. It is right at three feet there. It's half laying down, it's half, half laying down, half standing up, so. No. See how the court lays? Yeah. It's not three feet there. So we're we're three feet right out in the middle out there, we know. Now we're going to check up yonder way if I can get it to go up there. Yep. Yep. It's standing up. So we know we're three feet there. Okay. 
Look, you got a bite. Not there, I'm not. <laughs> not three feet there. So one spot in, or two, maybe three feet. That's not. That's not. So it seems like we're three feet right up in here, right up through the middle. Yep, we're three feet right there, instantly. Let's go check down off the end. We're three feet right there. So we need to go to the end. It is four right there. Wow. Okay, so we know we're four foot right there. Let's check. Out. Nope. Not four foot out that way. Okay, so we're not four foot up there. We are up in his head up here though. Let me see how far up in the upper end we're. Ooh, it yep. is. Definitely four feet there. It went down instantly. We're hovering at four foot right there. So we know got a little space is four foot and the space is three foot. Down the middle is three feet. This upper end right up here is four feet. So let me get in this shade right here. <laughs> Alright guys, so I'm well satisfied with the fact that it's four foot deep on this end up here and three feet down the middle. It seems to be two foot seems to be most of what it is along the edges. Uh, I'm very satisfied with that. As a matter of fact, that is enough that it would support bluegill right now, but I don't have the pH just right yet, so we're going to wait a little while till we get the pH up where we need to have it at. And one good thing about all the rain that we've been having is all my grass is starting to come up that I planted. I planted Pensacola Bahia around this whole pond, and guys, with all the rain, it's coming up now. Look at this. Take you down here and show you some of the grass seeds. See all this? This is what we're waiting on. As soon as we get this grass coming up everywhere, look at it, it's all in here everywhere. And it's kind of hard to see it in the light dirt. I picked some of the dark dirt, but it's all over the ground everywhere coming up. As soon as this grass gets a hold and gets going, that's going to pull a lot of the moisture out of the ground up on these top parts up here. To feed the grass and it'll dry it up good in here and that's one thing we've been trying to get done so we can stop some of the erosion problems which I guess with it being a new pond we really don't have a lot of bad erosion problems with all the rain we've had I think it's been kind of minor with the fact that it's all fresh dirt uh, but we do have plenty of grass planted so a lot of questions has been said man everything looks like it's going to erode all I see is dirt well it's a new pond all you're going to see around it is new dirt. It hasn't had time for the grass to come up yet, but it is coming up. It's been two weeks. Uh, the grass is up about an inch high. I think that's good. I think that's right on schedule. And all we're going to do now is just wait and let the good Lord do his work and fill it up when he sees fit. And when we get the pH right, we're going to be putting the bluegill and the flathead minnows in here, guys. Thank you, guys, from Deep South Homestead. Thank you.